Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well today. In our last video, we took a look at mounting a USB drive, sharing it via Samba, and then doing some port changes for COS OS so that later down the line, we can install a reverse proxy. In this video, we're going to take a look at installing Nextcloud uh, on COS OS. It's kind of a, it, it's a bit of a process, but it's not too, too bad. And at the end of this video, I'll give you guys a way to make it even easier. So definitely check that out at the end of this video. But before we get into all of that, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. If you don't want to, or can't for whatever reason, self-host applications the way we talk about on this channel, Linode provides virtual service that make it easy and affordable for you to host anything in the cloud. You can set up any of the applications that they have available in their marketplace with just a few clicks, or you can set up your own Docker VPS and install basically whatever you'd like in a Docker container. They have load balancers and firewalls available to help keep your apps online and safe. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24 seven customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash dbtech and get a $100 60 day credit on your new Linode account. Links are in the description. The first thing that we're going to do is actually install uh, a Yoba Systems Maria database because it's compatible with uh, Raspberry Pi, whereas the one that Nextcloud uses by default is not. So what we want to do is uh, come over to here and click on plus app on the right side. And uh, the database isn't in here anywhere. So we're just going to click on custom install. And then we're going to go ahead and fill in uh, all of the stuff that we need to fill in here. Now, uh, all of this will be what's available over here on the hub.docker.com Yoba Systems Alpine Maria database page. I will have that linked in the description down below. So if we come back to this page, what we're going to do is just kind of fill in some of these boxes. Again, like I said, we're going to use the Yoba Systems Alpine Maria database. We're going to use the latest version of that. And then for the app name, we want to give this something that, that we can identify what this container actually does. Um, so what I'm going to do is call this NC for next cloud uh, and then DB uh, for database. Of course, you could uh, elaborate on that if you wanted to like so. Um, however, you want to do that should be perfectly fine. Uh, below that, we've got an icon URL, and this is what we'll show on uh, on your dashboard uh, so that you know what it is. You can leave this as the default uh, image, the placeholder image that it's got here, or you can replace this with an image that you found online or, or whatever. I'm just going to leave it as it is for the time being. <clears throat> Now, if we come back over to here, uh, we can see that this needs to be on port 3306. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and put that in right there. And then, of course, we'll actually need to put those ports down here as well, like so. Uh, so now we've got all of our ports mapped for the database to, uh, connection. Uh, the next thing we want to do is mount a volume where we're going to store our database. So we'll click on Add uh, right here on Next to Volumes. And then here we've got some options as far as where we want to store our database. Now, if you're just going to use the the, the OS drive uh, where your install is located, you've just got one drive plugged in, that's all you wanna do. You don't wanna deal with external drives and mounting USB drives and, and all of that stuff you just wanna use. Let's say you just wanna use uh, your OS drive for this. What you would do in that case, uh, it, as far as the way I like to do things here is type in home or slash home slash, and then really you can kind of put it wherever you'd like to put it. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, Docker uh, and then uh, databases. That would be where I would, if I was going to use this setup, this is where I would store all of my databases. Um, but of course, then I want to uh, take it one level further so that it's stored in a, a next cloud database specific folder. Uh, so we could do like, you know, uh, next cloud uh, DB like so, um, and then, for our container where it needs to go or be mapped to on the container is var lib mysql. Now with, with setups like this, um, I'm not a big fan of storing the database on the same uh, on the same partition as my operating system. So I actually want to not store this here. I was just showing this as an example of where you might store this in that scenario. So we'll go ahead and get logged in to our, our server via SSH like so. <clears throat> okay, so 
Uh, if you followed along with the last video and you did mount an additional USB device to your setup, we mounted that in a slash MNT. So we'll do CD slash space slash MNT like so. And then here you can see we've got a couple of folders available. The first one being Sabrent, and that's the one we actually did in the tutorial. And then the USB that I had done beforehand while doing some testing to make sure I knew what I was doing for that tutorial. So uh, let's take a look uh, and let's do CD USB and we'll do an LS. So we've got some configs and we've got uh, a lost and found folder. Uh, I actually want to, uh, to store it in here, but I wanna create another folder in here called databases. So we're gonna do MKDIR databases like so, and then LS, and we've got configs and databases. So we're gonna go ahead and store our database for this scenario or for this uh, next cloud application in MNT slash USB slash databases. So I'm gonna go ahead. In fact, I'm actually going to do this. I'm gonna do MNT slash USB slash databases slash, and then I'll do next cloud DB, like so. The next thing we need to do is actually set up some environmental variables uh, for our, our database name, our, our credentials, those sorts of things. So we're gonna create uh, four uh, environmental variables, like so. We've just got those the keys and the values available. The first thing we wanna do is set up a root password, and I'm just gonna populate all of these keys first. Uh, so we've got our root password, we have a MySQL database, uh, that will be the, the name of the database in this case. Uh, we'll need to create a user, and then we'll need to just create a user password uh, for uh, for that user to connect to that database. So our root password, uh, of course, you should make this uh, long and convoluted uh, so that it's not easily hackable. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, however, I'm just gonna say password for the password. Uh, the MySQL database in this case will be next cloud, uh, as will the user, the next user will also be next cloud. And the password, again, make this secure, but for the sake of the tutorial, and to make it password. So now we have all of our information filled out here and available. Um, and if you wanted to, you could give a, the app a description saying, uh, this is uh, the database for our next cloud install, like so. And once we've got all of this up and ready to go, we can just click on install. And then it's going to do its process of downloading, extracting and deploying our uh, Yoba Systems Maria database. So we'll give this a minute and then we'll come back. A few moments later. Okay, so now we have our next cloud database right here. And we can, if we watch up here, we can kind of see the CPU uh, just kind of bouncing around doing its thing. And that's because it is, uh, the, the system is doing what it can with this database. So we go into settings and then come up here to terminal and logs. Like so. Okay, so if we scroll down, we can see that uh, we are ready for connections. So we should be good to go. So the next thing that we wanna do, we'll go ahead and close this. And the next thing we wanna do is actually come up here again and click on add app. We're going to do a custom install. And then what we're gonna do is fill in all of the blanks for next cloud. So now that we've got this screen up, we're just gonna go ahead and again, we're just gonna fill in the blanks uh, to make sure that we've got uh, all of our settings set up here. So I'm gonna, we're gonna use next cloud's latest. That's perfectly fine. Uh, our app name will be next cloud like so, and then we need to decide what port we want to put NextCloud on. Uh, I'm just gonna use port 8181, like so. Of course, you can choose basically any port you wanna put NextCloud on. That's completely up to you. Uh, so of course, we used our bridge network last time, so we're gonna keep that theme going. And then we're gonna click on add for ports. Our, our host port, again, will be 8181. That's what we chose up here for the web UI. And then the container port will be port 80. And again, if you want to, you can uh, you can actually come over here and see uh, all of, I believe it's in here somewhere, there we go. We can kind of see everything going on here. Um, that's where basically where I'm getting all of this information. Um, and so then we're gonna come back over to here. And the next thing we need to do is add some volumes. So there are a couple of different ways that you can handle mounting volumes with this one. You can just mount everything in one folder and be done with it. Or uh, if you want to be more granular, you can uh, then mount uh, different folders for different things, uh, or different volumes, different folders, whatever, for different things, whether it's apps, themes, files, data, whatever the case is, uh, you can mount multiple different volumes. And I do wanna show uh, both versions of that here. So if you were just going to mount everything in one folder, you might do something like this, um, and then like that. And here is where 
everything would get stored. Um, and and that's that's fine for a simple, small install. But if you want to have some more granular control over things, you may want to break that out into uh, multiple uh, shared folders or multiple uh, volumes to make sure that you can do what you want without affecting anything else. So what we're going to do uh, is we're, we're going to we're gonna delete that. We are gonna leave this var www.html. Uh, that 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 volume or that that part of the container is still required. Uh, we're gonna add some more of these though. Again, we've got our var www.html. Uh, the next thing we would want to mount would be uh, for custom apps if we wanted to upload and manage custom apps. Uh, we've also got a configuration folder that we need uh, that we'll want to mount in this case. We've got a uh, a data folder as well. And then there is one other option that you could use to mount custom themes. However, theming Nextcloud is kind of outside the scope of this video. Uh, what we wanna do is just get this set up and ready to go. So we're just gonna go ahead and mount these four folders here. Now, uh, again, we've mounted our, our database in here. In fact, if we do a CD into databases, uh, there's our Nextcloud database. So let's bring it back to here and then we'll do a CD into configs. Uh, we actually saw that just a moment ago, right here. Uh, we saw that was in mount or MNT slash USB. So we're gonna go ahead and and uh, jump into that folder. Uh, we'll do an LS. Here you can see I've got some stuff uh, from a previous tutorial video, uh, but basically what we're gonna do is create a Nextcloud uh, folder in here and we'll, we're gonna let the app do it this time. Uh, that's how all of those were created. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just create our, uh, or let this kind of do its own thing here. So I'm gonna copy that. And I'm just gonna paste each, or paste that in each one of these. And I'm gonna say uh, slash uh, next cloud. And we'll just say uh, www, or www, oops. And actually I should have just done this. And we're gonna say uh, apps and then uh, config and then data like so. And that handles all of the volumes that we would need to manage each of those different mounts individually. The next thing we wanna take a look at is environmental variables. Now this is going to uh, be how we're going to connect to the database. We're gonna set up some stuff here. So again, we're going to need four, uh, four variables here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get those set up. Uh, the first one, of course, will be the password. Uh, it doesn't really matter what order these are in, um, but again, we set password for the password there. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. The database here will be next cloud. Uh, we can go ahead and just type that in. The user will also be next cloud. Oops, next cloud. And then the key will be the MySQL host. Uh, what we wanna do here is actually just enter the, the IP address and port uh, where the database currently resides. So in this case, it'll be 192.168.1.130 on port 3306, like so. And then the app, if we scroll down, we can we can set CPU shares, probably ought to set that one to medium. Restart policy looks good. The app description, uh, we'll just call this next, oops, next cloud uh, service, like so. And then basically at this point, we're done, we're good to go, uh, and we can click on install. So again, this is gonna go through its process of downloading and extracting and then building the container. And then if all goes well, it should automatically connect to the database container, and then we should be able to move on from there. Eventually. Okay, so here is something that may happen, and I wanna just address it now. Like here we can see uh, that this is still spinning. Normally a different window would have popped up to let us know that uh, something was going on. Uh, luckily, we can also kind of see in the background here, if you've been, uh, I've been kind of monitoring here, uh, where the, the CPU was was pegged out uh, at 100% for, for a good chunk uh, of time here. And now it's it's kind of idled out um, and it's it's just kind of hovering between zero and, and 10%. Uh, so it's fairly safe to assume that it's done doing whatever it's doing. However, uh, it kind of looks like this page has has not necessarily stopped responding, but isn't doing what we want it to do. So uh, what I've done is actually opened this up in a new browser window, uh, just so that we can kind of see here. And, and here we can see we've got Nextcloud and the Nextcloud database. Um, so basically what we can do uh, now is just click on that icon right there. And we're going to create an admin account like so like that. And then you've got the option to install recommended apps or not. If you'd like to, to install those recommended apps, um, of course, those are the ones that Nextcloud recommends, not necessarily what I would recommend, but these are the default apps that uh, Nextcloud recommends. You can leave that box checked. However, if you want to uh, not do that, you can uncheck that box if you'd like. Uh, either way, once you've made that decision, go ahead and click on finish setup. Um, and then 
if there was going to be an issue, normally it would have happened right there. Uh, normally it would have thrown some kind of like can't connect to the database or some database error uh, that uh, it would give us some sort of a database error more often than not. However, uh, it's doing this. So I believe we're good to go here. Uh, in fact, if we come back over, we can see that it's, it's definitely doing something in the background there. Um, so it uh, we'll go ahead and just give this a minute uh, to do its thing. Hopefully this page will change here in just a moment, showing that it is going through the process of installing each of those different applications. Um, so we'll go ahead and give this a minute to do its thing and then we'll come back when that's ready. All right, there's what we wanted to see. So now we know that things are working. Now, there is a chance that the, the Collabora Online or Collabora, whatever, uh, may fail. That seems to be a running theme with Nextcloud on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I've, I've had it brought up to me a couple of different times. Um, so we'll go ahead and see what happens here. But just know that, that the Collabora, however that's set, Collabora uh, may, may actually throw an error message, uh, but it shouldn't actually affect the rest of the install. All right, app download or installation failed. Just like I mentioned, that may happen. Uh, contacts and everything else seems to be going just fine. Uh, so I think it's just a compatibility issue uh, with uh, Calabra and Raspberry Pi or ARM processors in this particular case anyway. Okay, so here we are on our dashboard. Everything is installed and working exactly like we wanted it to. And so here is our little intro screen that we can go through and get familiar with Nextcloud if we're not already familiar with it. So the next steps for me anyway, will be to come over to here and uh, click on these little icons, go to settings and then click export app file. While these are easy to set up, going through the process that I showed, you know, filling in all of the blanks and that sort of thing. Uh, the reason I've exported these is because I'm going to make them available over on Patreon. So if you'd like an even easier time at setting up Docker containers in Casa OS, uh, I will have all of our, basically let's call them project files available for patrons uh, on a certain level and above so that they can download these files and just import them and deploy the containers and be done and be up and running in, in just a matter of seconds versus a matter of several minutes. So if it's worth your time to spend a few bucks to become a patron and make your installations even easier, head on over to the link in the description to become a patron. However, that being said, this tutorial will be available over on dbtech uh, without, of course, the installation files, but all of the steps necessary to deploy these containers on your own Casa OS setup. So I think with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up, but I do wanna pass off a question to you guys as far as what containers you'd like to see installed in here. Now, I've had several people ask me about things like Nginx Proxy Manager, that one's coming. Uh, Zero Tier is coming. We may also do Pi-hole, that one has been requested a lot. Uh, we may look at some other ad blocking like uh, AdGuard Home, uh, but however, those things aren't really easily installable via uh, the dashboard here. So I'm kind of iffy on how to do that uh, as far as that's concerned. But if there are other containers that you'd like to see me install on Raspberry Pi, Casa OS, uh, in Docker, of course, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to take any considerations of any of the applications that you guys have in mind or would like to see uh, a deeper dive on as far as how to install. But I think with all of that being said, I am going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.